It's just preparing to stream. Yeah, it just notified me that we're live streaming. Perfect. All right. We are good to go. So we'll give it about a minute or two to just allow people who wanted to join our Facebook Live series today to join in. Um, and then we'll get started. Sounds good. All right, lovely. Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Back to School Live series. My name is Andrea and I am a health promoter with Niagara Parents. Today we welcome Allison, an occupational therapist at Niagara Region Public Health to discuss tips and tricks to help your child cope with stress this school year. So with the constant changes, a lot of unknowns and new protocols, we thought this was the perfect opportunity to answer your questions about your child's stress. Um, before we get started, I do have a few reminders as well. Uh, feel free to put any questions that you may have in the chat box for Allison to answer at the end. There will be a Q&A. Um, the presentation will be recorded and saved on Niagara Parents Facebook and YouTube pages in case you missed it or you'd like to watch it again. Um, if you are unable to answer your questions, please reach out to us via Facebook Messenger or through our live chat phone or email and we can connect you to resources that way. And then contact information will all be located in the chat box as well. Um, and we can connect you to resources um, that we mentioned throughout the live today as well. So those will all be links in the chat for you. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Allison uh, to give us a really good lay down of back to school stress with your children. Thanks so much, Andrea. It's so good to be here and having this conversation because I think it's a it's a really important conversation to have. So I appreciate you letting me join you today. Um, so stress and back to school. Um, so back to school, what we know is that any change can increase stress. And this is a pretty major change that's going to be happening for a lot of children and youth. Um, on top of just the change of back to school, we also are in the middle of a pandemic and there's a lot of unknowns happening, different protocols, different rules. And as a result, um, children and youth um, may find this particularly, particularly stressful. So what is stress exactly? Um, so we know that stress is a term people often use to describe a feeling of pressure, strain, or tension. And people often say they are under stress or feel stressed out when they are dealing with challenging situations or events. So what we do know is that everyone encounters stressful situation. It's a part of life. Um, sometimes stress can come from something positive, like a new job, a new apartment, a new relationship. Um, but also it can uh, come from something negative, like being bored, having an argument with someone. Um, so, but the good news is, is that you can develop um, strategies to help you prevent and cope better with stress. And that's what we're gonna be chatting about today. So one of the very first things that you wanna do and talk to your, your child or your youth about is knowing what's gonna make them stress, what makes them feel stress. Um, because not every child is gonna be the same. Um, what one child might find stressful, another child won't. Um, because different people find different situations stressful. So really becoming aware of those stressful situations is the first um, step to preventing stress. So for your child, you know, it could be um, taking tests, different subjects in school, um, the thought of socialization and having to meet new people, um, the idea of what happens if I get sick and, and all of the protocol around that. Um, and, and just as well for your child, there's, uh, you know, there's still a lot of unknowns. What, what's going to happen with the school year, different changes and COVID-19 protocols. So really having that conversation with your child and finding out, you know, what is it that is causing, causing them the most amount of stress? 
as a parent, um, you can recognize stress in your child because sometimes children might not have the words to describe that they're feeling stress, but there are certain signs and symptoms that you might notice in your children um, that can, you know, as a parent really help you realize that, that your child might be under a significant amount of stress or feeling stressed out about a certain situation. So I have this pretty exhaustive list here, um, but, you know, there's a number of different areas um, that, you know, might show up as stress in, in different people's lives. So headaches, sweating, increased heart, um, heart rate, you might see a change in appetite um, in your child. So they might not be eating very much, or you might see it go in the opposite direction where they're eating a lot more than they might normally eat, um, increased need for sleep. So they might be sleeping a lot more or the opposite, having a hard time falling asleep at night. Um, for me, it's the forgetfulness and the irritability. Um, my loved ones know when I'm under stress because I'm definitely a little bit more irritable than I normally end. And I forget important details really easily. So, um, you know, there's this list here and um, you can kind of have a look and think, oh yeah, you know, these are some of the behaviors that I might see or the signs and symptoms I might see in my child. Um, and, and just noticing that that's, that's like, likely when they're feeling some stress. So once you've identified the cause of the stress, you know, then, then what do you do, right? Well, you know, the very first thing you want to do with, with a child or a youth is, is listen to them. You know, what is it that's causing them stress? Um, you know, and have them talk about it and, and have them talk and just, you know, reflect back to them what you, what it is that you're hearing them say. Um, so using phrasing like, so what I hear you're saying is, or what you're telling me is, so that they can really feel like they're being listened to and understood understood. And then you also want to, you know, provide them with some empathy. And, and empathy is that ability to understand and share in the feelings of another. So in, in order to um, express empathy to your child, you know, you can think of a time that you yourself felt stress and what that felt like you, like what that felt like for you. So for example, I remember when I had to go to a new school and that was really hard. Um, and, and just really, you know, understanding, you know, starting a new school year with a lot of unknowns, that's really stressful. So just reflecting and empathizing with that, um, with what they're experiencing. And then once you've done that listening, that empathy, then you can move forward with some problem solving um, and doing that together, making it a collaborative effort. Um, you know, you want to hear your child's input and what they think might help them make, uh, feel a bit better. So, you know, just some, some pretty um, simple, straightforward steps to problem solving. Again, we talked about this. You want to identify the problem um, together. So what is it? Is it, you know, you have to go um, and meet new friends or you're nervous about meeting a new teacher and then together brainstorm some solutions. So what might, what might make you feel a bit better about this or, or how, might this how might this transition be easier for you? Um, and you can come up with a number of different solutions. You don't need to come up with just one. And then you're going to evaluate the pros and cons of that solution. So what solution do you think is going to work best for you in this situation? And with that, then you want to choose the situation that your child thinks is going to work the best for them or the solution. And then together make a plan to implement that solution. So whether that's letting the teacher know that you're really worried about this certain area of school or, you know, Know, having um, a time to connect with a friend before school starts so you feel more comfortable with somebody your own age, um, whatever, that, whatever that plan might be. And then as the school year continues and goes on, then you want to monitor, you know, keep an eye out for those signs of stress, ask them how, you know, that solution you came up with together is going and see if there needs to be any changes to that solution. So there are some things that we can do as well to prevent stress from really, you know, um, you know, taking a hold of us and, 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 and making us feel really, really bad. And, and, and that's just lifestyle, right? Um, so, you know, 
whether that's taking care of health, so making sure, you know, proper nutrition, making sure they get lots of sleep, um, and making sure, you know, that they're staying active, getting lots of outdoors time, just general wellness can really help somebody's response to stress and their ability to cope with stress. Um, participating in meaningful activities, so finding out what it is that your child really loves and wants to do, and encouraging that participation, um, having them feel like they can talk to someone about their feelings, you know, being able to express themselves. So whether that's you as the parent, or if that's, um, you know, a friend or another um, relative that they want to chat with um, about their feelings, maintaining a sense of humor in the household can be really effective. Um, you know, laughter, it can um, release endorphins, which are those feel good um, chemicals and can actually decrease some stress hormones. So whether that's watching a funny show with them, um, participating in a shared joke, um, laughter, you know, just um, keeping the atmosphere light and, and fun can be really helpful in preventing stress. Exercise is really, really important for preventing stress. Um, some studies have shown that exercise can sometimes be as therapeutic as an antidepressant. So it can be really, really effective in, in bringing down some of those levels of stress and anxiety. Um, and, you know, shorter, intense bursts of, of, of um, exercise can be really helpful. So when you think of a child, you know, something like playing a game of tag, going to the playground, it doesn't have to be anything structured, but really ensuring those moments of, of intense physical activity can really help to bring um, some of those, those stress levels down. And then along with participating in meaningful activities, music in itself can be really helpful. You know, as a family listening to your favorite song together, um, or if, you're, if your child is interested in music, um, playing a musical instrument can really help bring some of those stress levels and, and work really well overall in preventing, preventing stress. And then there's some strategies you can have for in the moment to really cope with stress. So, you know, when you're feeling really overwhelmed, um, things are getting more difficult, there's some strategies you can use to help in that moment itself. And I'm gonna talk about three different relaxation strategies today. Um, and these are ones that you can share with your child and encourage them to use when they're feeling really overwhelmed in the moment. Um, so first is breathing. Um, so there's something called four corner or square breathing. It's been referred to. Um, and what you would, you just need to remember the number four. So you would have your child inhale for a count of four, three, four, hold for a count of four, let all the air out of their lungs for a count of four, and then rest for a count of four, keep your lungs empty for a count of four. And then you can cycle through that recommended 10 to 15 times um, in a, a day. And that can really help bringing that sense of stress and anxiety down. Um, if your child is younger, or if it's too difficult to remember the four um, corner square breathing, um, you can just uh, encourage them to exhale longer than they inhale. So one inhale and then a long exhale afterwards. Um, so really, you know, increasing the length of that exhale. And again, repeat 10 to 15 times. Um, breathing can be very, very powerful and very helpful in bringing that anxiety and that stress down in the moment. It can be also something that can be practiced regularly to prepare your body to respond to stress as well. Um, muscle relaxation or stretches. So any sort of, you know, I mentioned exercise being really important. Any sort of physical movement um, can be really, really helpful in relieving stresses. So there's a series here of different, um, you know, muscle movements or, or stretches that you could have them do where they do some shoulder shrugs, um, repeat about three to five times, some overhead arm stretches, um, 
you want to interlace your fingers and raise up nice to the hot, nice and high to the sky. Um, stomach tension is a great one. So with this one, you actually want them to um, pull stomach muscles towards your back as tight as you can, as tight as you can tolerate. So really squeeze those stomach stomach muscles back towards your back. Feel that tension. Hold on to it for ten seconds, and then release. Um, out of all of them, I find that one to really be effective because you can feel that tension um, gathering and then the, re the release itself feels really, really nice. Um, it's almost like a release of tension. You could have them raise their knees up, you know, repeat that 10 to 15 times and even do some foot and ankle rolls. So any sort of physical movement can really work well to bring down um, that feeling of tension and stress. Um, on YouTube, if you're more interested in some, um, some physical movements to promote um, some coping um, with stress, there is a psychologist named um, Dr. Harvey Skinner, and we're going to be linking in the chat his YouTube. Um, and he is uh, trained in what's called Qigong. And so he goes through a series of different movements that um, children have found really effective in, um, in managing and, and, and coping with stress. So physical movement is a wonderful, wonderful tool. And the last one is imagery. So this is where you would have your child um, find a, choose a scene that they find peaceful, calm, and restful. Um, so a lot of children have those places in their minds, places that, you know, bring them a sense of peace, a sense of joy. So whether that's the beach, um, a playground, um, a loved one's house, um, any place that makes them feel good and that they enjoy being there. So have them think of that spot and then encourage them to use their five, sen five senses while they're imagining. So when you're at the beach, you know, what is it that you're seeing? Are you seeing the water? Are there seagulls? Are you seeing the sand? Are you seeing the leaves um, rustling through the trees? What are you, what are you hearing? Um, are you hearing the movement of the water? Are there, are there birds chirping? Um, are there other people there talking to you, having conversation to you? What are you feeling? Do you feel the, the sand under your feet? Do you feel the breeze on your skin? Um, so really, you know, focusing on those senses and, and encouraging them to really visualize and imagine being in that spot. While they're doing this imagery um, activity, you know, you're going to, they're going to notice other thoughts that come into their head at that time. Um, you know, when anyone's ever practicing any sort of mindfulness, you might have thoughts come in and, you know, all you have to do is notice the thought and then let them, let them move forward without any judgment. Just say, I'm having that thought and then allow it to move, move on by and then refocus on, on that scene that you're imagining. So those were just some, you know, some little tips around uh, coping with stress in the moment. And then when it comes to school in particular, you know, there are some things you can do with your child or encourage with your child to help decrease the amount of stress that they might experience overall, uh, overall some strategies for school. So one of those things is creating a visual calendar. Um, so the best is to use like a monthly calendar, just a regular monthly calendar um, so that you can see what sort of assignments. This is more for the, the older aged children or high schoolers. You know, what assignments are due? When are they going to be having tests? So that they can really have a nice visual display of what's coming up um, and allow them to plan and organize their time in advance as opposed to leaving things to the last minute. You also want to schedule in other commitments um, into that calendar, such as appointments, extracurricular um, um, commitments, anything else so that you can really have a good sense of, of your timing and your time management. Um, and then even on that calendar, you know, scheduling in some self-care um, or some breaks some some things that your child likes to do or enjoys. Another thing to pay attention to is the study environment. Um, so it's suggested that the best place to study is actually at a table or a desk. So to avoid a place like a bed or a couch, because um, you might get a little bit too comfortable in that area and might get tired. Um, 
keep the space quiet and well lit. Um, keep all necessary materials at the study spot. So whatever it is, whether it's pencils, pens, markers, um, keep them keep them nearby so you're not having to get up to leave to, to gather items and really work to eliminate as many distractions as possible. Um, so whether that whether that's a sibling in the house or access to social media, you know, really eliminate um, distractions as much as much as possible. And then have your child use their studying at times of day when they're most alert. So if your child is someone who does best in the mornings, um, you know, that might be a time for them to work on some of their assignments or if they're better in the evenings, you know, that's a good time to have them to have them do their homework really encourage with your children to take breaks. Um, do not have them try to finish everything in one sitting. Um, it's generally recommended a five minute break every 20 to 30 minutes um, and have them get up from their desk and do something unrelated to studying in that five minutes. So something like playing with a pet, doing some stretches, a breathing exercise, listening to music, having a snack like vegetables or protein, drinking a glass of water, and really best in that five minute break to avoid screens, um, especially if your child will be using a screen for their homework. Um, and then again, I've mentioned this before, but really prioritize sleep. Um, it's really important. We're about a week out to school starting. So now is the time to really start getting your child onto a regular sleep and wake schedule. And that's where you really encourage sleep at the same time every day and waking at the same time every day. Um, and when, when your child might have an assignment due or a test the next day, really encourage them to not stay up all night um, work or work past midnight because they might think it's helpful, but um, studies have actually shown that staying up late and losing sleep um, can negatively impact uh, performance. So really working on that sleep. And if you need more tips on sleep, you know, just look up sleep hygiene online. There's a lot of really nice suggestions on, on way to in, in, encourage, encourage good sleep. So something you can do with this school year coming up, you can sit down together and, and come up with a plan um, for coping with stress. So like I've mentioned before, you know, identify the stressful situations um, that might cause your child stress. Um, identify together what are the signs that they're under stress? Are they going to be having headaches? You know, are they going to eat less? Are they going to be irritable? What are signs that really show that your child might be under stress? talk about some of those lifestyle strategies for preventing stress, whether that's regular physical activity, proper nutrition, um, engaging in a meaningful activity, and then talk about what, what works best when you're really under stress and you need, you need something to do to bring those stress levels down. So whether that's a breathing exercise, um, imagery, or some sort of physical movement, muscle relaxation, um, tension release activity. Um, so you guys can kind of sit down together and, and sort that out together. I did want to mention that there's some additional resources. So if you're finding that your loved one is really, really having a hard time managing stress, and it's to the point where, you know, talking about it and certain strategies is not having an impact, and you have concerns about their wellness and their mental well being, that's when you would want to seek out some professional support. Um, so some of the resources that I've listed and we'll be linking in the chat. There's a new website that's been released called Wellness Together Canada, and it's Canada's first and only online platform offering free and immediate mental health and substance use support for people of all ages. So this is actually funded by the government of Canada, and they're available 24 seven free and completely confidential with no wait times and this is for all ages. There's also the kids help phone. Um, so this is Canada's only 24 seven national support service offering professional counseling information and referrals. Um, so if your child wants to talk to someone and, and this is somewhere where you can have them connect with to reach out. Locally, we have Pathstone Mental Health, um, and this is up to age 18. So this is a mental health service for youth, children and youth. And currently their in-person walk-in clinics are now open throughout Niagara, which is wonderful. 
you can also call their crisis and support line 1-800-263-4944. And lastly, here at Niagara Region Mental Health, we do offer service for 16 plus youth, youth mental health and addictions program, or your family doctor can send a telemedicine referral where they can have access to psychiatry as well. Um, so we've, we've linked um, that website in the chat as well. So that's all I have pre prepared for today. Um, and Andrea, I think we're gonna move in to see if there are any further questions. I'm gonna stop sharing. Lovely, that was wonderful. Uh, we do have a bunch of questions, so that is awesome. Thank you all for participating. And if you do have any questions um, as we continue to answer them, please put them in the chat box and Allison will do her best to get to everyone. Of course, I will remind you as well um, that Niagara Parents is there and available for you. So if we don't get to your question today, please reach out to us. We have public health nurses on the line and they're happy to help and support. So one of our first questions is from Jennifer actually, and she's saying that her child is nervous about meeting a new teacher and having to wear a mask all day. Do you have any tips on helping your child with that nervousness? I think that's a really good one. And I think that's a really common concern for a lot of children um, and, and really valid. So first of all, you know, validating that concern and, and, and like I was saying, really empathize with the child. Yeah, meeting a new teacher, meeting somebody new is hard and, and wearing a mask is, is, is new and different, right? Um, so, you know, just, you know, uh, validating their concerns. Um, and the thing with meeting a new teacher, that's generally the first day. And so just letting them know that over time, these stressors and anxiety, how anxiety works, it tends to go down the more you experience it and are exposed to it right so it's going to be hard the first day and you know on um, reflecting back to them that other other children are also going to be nervous about meeting their new teacher with the mask wearing I would really encourage as much practice as possible um, again it's that exposure piece right um, so you know really taking your child to places where they're required to wear masks um, and even at home you know saying just to get used to wearing a mask for extended periods of time, really encouraging that practice. And also, you know, reflecting back to your child that all the other kids in your class will be mask wearing as well. So, you know, they're not going to be alone in this and it's going to be a, a major adjustment period for everyone. But it, it's a it's a very good question for sure. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's nerve wracking. Children, children are nervous. So just acknowledging mm -hmm. that goes a really long way. Definitely. Uh, we have another question from a viewer asking about meditation. Uh, would meditation work for helping reduce my child's stress? Oh my goodness, yes, I love meditation and I didn't get a chance to get into it today, but please, please encourage meditation with your children. It's it's another act of mindfulness, which is just being present in the moment. And there's so much research on mindfulness these days and its effectiveness in reducing stress. Um, so there's lots of resources out there online for meditation for youth. Um, you know, YouTube, Spotify has playlists. So, you know, if you're looking for some guided meditations, there's a a lot of options out there for free and and definitely you know the younger someone starts meditation the better so i think that's an excellent um suggestion and and, and would definitely encourage meditation in youth you can definitely tie in those imagery suggestions that you talked mm. about as well throughout the meditation so that is for awesome. sure all right we have another question from a viewer asking about their own stress uh, will my own stress affect my kids and how can i handle that that's a great question. I'm a parent as well, so I know what that's like. And this has been a stressful year and a half for parents. I, you know, we're all we're all with you there. Um, a lot of the unknowns and a lot of the variables has caused a lot of stress in parents. And you know, what I, all of these coping strategies that I just suggested, please be using them yourself as well. These are all strategies that I live and breathe by as well um, to manage my own stress levels because it's a lot lot harder to respond to our children's needs when we're feeling stressed ourselves. 
So, you know, taking care of yourself, engaging in, you know, some of those um, prevention measures, nutrition, health, exercise, self-care, um, so that you can really respond to your, your children's stress as well. Um, but it's an excellent point to make that parents are also very stressed right now. Hey, if mom and dad need to take a four, four second breathing break, go Yes, <laughs> do it. I do it myself. These are all yes. things I do. <laughs> all right. Another question uh, from Ricky. Ricky asks, my little one is heading to kindergarten for the first time. Any tips? Oh, yes. Um, that is a that is a really, really hard time for parents and for children. It's a, it's a major transition, um, especially in a pandemic, right? There's a lot of unknowns and you're not entirely sure what to expect. And so just really having those conversations with your child. I know they're young at this stage, but they can understand a lot more than than we might anticipate. Right. So really talking to them what it's going to be like preparing them. Um, you know, you know, having them practice opening and closing their lunch box, if they're riding the bus, you know, talk about what that will be like. Um, so really just having a lot of conversation um, and asking what their questions are, because they probably have a lot of questions as well, and, and doing your best to be there for them with this transition. Um, and kindergarten kids, you know, they are so resilient. They're going to go there. The first day is going to be hard. They're going to love it. And then, you know, it's going to get easier over time. But but certainly a really challenging time for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, another question is in regards to virtual school. So this is actually a really good question. It's asking my little one has only ever done virtual school. Mm -hmm. So how do I prepare them for that transition into in-person learning? Yeah, and I think there will be probably a number of people in this situation um, because virtual and in-person school are very different, right? Um, there's there's some major um, differences between those two. So it, again, it's similar to the kindergarten prep where you just have a lot of conversations and a lot of, you know, um, problem solving together and really figuring out, you know, what that's gonna look like for them um, and, you know, there's also no no reason why you can't contact the teacher in advance and just you know ask for some reassurance on their part what that might look like. Um, so again, you know it's going to be a big transition for sure, um, but you'll you'll be surprised as well with the resilience of the children. They might find they'll really enjoy the the in person learning. Awesome. So I have a question here. Sorry, it's asking. Oh, I have two children and only one of them is going back to school this year, but my little one is stressed about missing their sibling. Uh, do you have any suggestions yeah. for this? So sweet. Yeah. And, and you know what, that's a really valid question too, because, you know, especially in a pandemic, siblings have been spending a ton of time together. A lot of the time they've been there, the only other person's play partner, right? So they've, I'm sure they've gotten a lot of, of um, connectedness throughout this time. So um, I think that's a really Really important point to not forget the siblings that you know might not be old enough to return to school at this point and really making it a special time for them you know if they're still going to be at home you know really using that time um, to to connect and spend some special one-on-one -on -one parent time um, and also you know anticipating the excitement of when their their sibling gets to come home whether that's getting at pickup or off the bus and and really looking forward to that as a special moment Lovely. We have one more question. And please, if any viewers have any additional, please plop them in the chat now. We're happy to answer. Um, the last question we have for today is what signs should I look for? And how do I know when my child's day to day stress may be becoming something more serious and might require professional help? Yeah, and, and you know, that's that's a really great question. Um, we really want to, you know, be proactive in our children's mental health. And so if, you know, as a parent, your intuition is, you know, always right, right? Like, so really trust your intuition. So if you've tried to engage in some of these coping strategies and these prevention techniques with your child, and they're still really struggling, please reach out as soon as possible, because we know that early intervention 
education works the best. So if you're ever wondering and thinking that your child, you know, if they're not functioning the way they normally do, if you're noticing changes in personality, um, if they're having a hard time with things like sleep and eat, right away, please reach out to your um, primary care, your family physician, or access those resources that we posted online. Really important to reach out for professional help. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to all of our viewers for joining us today. Uh, all of the resources that Allison mentioned are from today's presentation are all in the comments section. So if you do want to go back and reference, please look through there and all of the links are there and easy for you to access. If you have any additional questions or you're watching this over, um, please feel free to reach out to us at Niagara Parents. We have Facebook Messenger, live chat. You can even give us a phone call and we have public health nurses available to support. Um, also a reminder that we have more exciting back to school Facebook Live events on the horizon um, during the month of September. So our next month uh, will be Wednesday, September 8th, and this will be about preteen screen time with public school health nurse Madison. So please tune in, the event page is up, you can go in RSVP for a reminder. We wish you and your family all the best and thank you again for tuning in. Bye everyone. Bye.